We, are, we now move to Dr. Sharada Herk, who's a Canadian who did a PhD in mathematics at the University of Queensland, and is now, she went there for the weather, apparently, <laughs> and is now working as a re research fellow at Monash University. In her spare time, she creates YouTube videos in graph theory and combinatorics, which is her area of research. Please join me in welcoming her. Well, hi everyone. I'm really happy to be here tonight, and I've also really enjoyed all of the stories thus far. I was invited to talk about my mathematical hero, and so let's pick one. Archimedes, Gauss, Newton, who are you going to choose? Well, I'm actually not choosing somebody that I read about in a textbook. I'm not choosing somebody that was um, doing some amazing mathematics, but that I don't really know anything about. Um, I'm choosing somebody who is from today. He is not known for developing a major mathematical result. He's not known for being a distinguished professor, and he's not known for winning a Fields Medal. But instead, he's known for what he's been doing to revolutionize education. And that person is Salman Khan. So you may not have heard of Sal Khan, so let me tell you a tiny bit about his background. He was born in the United States after his parents immigrated there from India. And he's no stranger to academic challenges because he received three degrees from MIT and he topped it off with an MBA from Harvard. Okay, that's pretty impressive already. When he graduated though, he started working as a hedge fund analyst and he was making a lot of money. So with such a lucrative career, it's kind of surprising that our story doesn't just stop right here. But something interesting happened at this time. He started tutoring his younger cousin in mathematics. And then other cousins wanted his tutoring, and so they lived far away. So what's the solution? Post 10 minute videos on YouTube. All right, two interesting things happened due to this. The first thing was his cousin's reaction. They said, oh, we like your YouTube videos much better than your tutoring. <laughs> okay. Take a minute and shake off the blow to the ego that that is, and try to absorb this, right? Okay, let's think about it. Maybe when you're learning something for the first time, no matter how great a tutor you have, maybe the last thing you need is for somebody to be sitting next to you and waiting expectantly for you to understand. And maybe you're a little bit too embarrassed to say that you forgot what you learned last week. But, with a video, there's no harm in pausing and replaying certain bits or going back and watching a previous video. There's no embarrassment and there's no time restriction. So what was the second interesting thing that happened? Well, the view count on these videos started to become larger than the number of cousins he had. <laughs> okay, a lot larger. And then he started to get messages from people all around the world. They were loving doing mathematics. People of all ages were reporting that calculus was fun. And if you ask me, that's just fantastic. So then he started to receive messages that made him understand that this wasn't just a useful tool and it wasn't just to help answer certain questions. It had a broader effect than that. He received the following message from a parent saying, my 12-year-old son has autism and has had a terrible time with math. We have tried everything, bought everything, and viewed everything. Then we stumbled on your video on decimals and it got through. Then we moved on to the dreaded fractions and again he got it. We could not believe it and he is so excited. Saul said that as a hedge fund analyst, it was rather strange to find out that he had done something of social value. <laughs> And for many of us, if we find out that we did something that improves other people's lives, we give ourselves a nice pat on the back and then carry on with life as normal. But the incredible responses that Saul was getting on a daily basis had such an impact on him that he decided to quit his job and focus all of his attention on his YouTube channel. Okay, let's get a mental picture going here. Saul quits his hiring job, now he spends every day at home working out of a closet in the bedroom at a tiny desk 
where he steadily records more and more mathematics videos. Well, let's just take a moment to appreciate how supportive his wife is. <laughs> At this time, people started to ask him, how are you going to make a business out of this? How are you going to make a profit? But Saul decided to make Khan Academy, a nonprofit organization, so that his videos would be provided to the world for free forever. And he says this in, that he was influenced to make this decision by the fact that MIT had recently created MIT's open courseware. Now, let's say you've never seen one of Saul's videos. It's easy to describe. Close your eyes and imagine a black screen. Now you slowly hear Saul's calm, soothing voice as he explains a concept. And at the same time, you see his handwriting in bright colors scrawl across the screen. It's that simple, but it's really effective. Now, if you couldn't guess that this is where I was going with the story, or you hadn't already heard about it, Saul made thousands of videos on a staggering number of topics. So essentially, as far as mathematics goes, if you watch his videos, you could start at grade one, learning how to add one plus one, and go right through to uni. It's unbelievable. And he's also made videos in biology, chemistry, physics, economics, and the list goes on. And his goal is to create videos on every topic he possibly can. Now you may ask, is there really a need for a revolution in our maths education? The way I see it is this. We are still in a time when mathematics is considered to be somewhat of a mystery. Believe me, I can see the anxiety on people's faces when I tell them I'm a mathematician. <laughs> now, one thing, if you think about it, how can a video help? One thing is that our current educational system doesn't really focus on telling you how to master a concept. It just focuses on getting you through, getting you by and passing a course. But Saul has an excellent analogy for this, and I really like to use it. Imagine you're learning how to ride a bicycle, and you're a little bit wobbly, and you can make turns with roughly 70% accuracy. And then you're graduated to the next level, a unicycle. Well, good luck. <laughs> so this is what we do with mathematics and science education, and it's no wonder that students come all the way through high school and have big gaps in their knowledge of mathematics and science. I also think that everyone here is probably familiar with the idea that you might be too embarrassed to ask a question or admit that you forgot something that people expect you to know. I know I've certainly felt too embarrassed to ask questions at times, and I can see how this would cause some people to give up. So why a video can help is because a video tutorial is a 24-7 judgment-free zone where the student shapes their own learning experience. And now, Saul's videos have gone beyond just a library of videos. In fact, if we think about it more seriously, there is a real need for change in our education system globally. Many famous scientists have discussed this need, and one example of this is Richard Feynman. We heard about him tonight, so you all know who I'm talking about. He was funded in his career by the US government to go to Brazil and spend some time teaching physics there and he was asked to report on his experiences. Now, as you heard tonight, he likes to speak honestly. So this is a quote from him about his experiences teaching physics in Brazil. After a lot of investigation, I finally figured out that the students had memorized everything, but they didn't know what anything meant. I couldn't see how anyone could be educated in this self-propagating system in which people learn how to pass exams and teach others how to pass exams, but nobody knows anything. Okay, well, in my travels, I actually have seen the kind of environment that encourages this type of blind memorization that Feynman describes. I've also seen classrooms where teachers keep a stick for beating children who get questions wrong. And I've also seen universities that brush off plagiarism and cheating because it increases students' scores. This is real and it needs to change. We should all be aware of the fact that there are places in the world where there may not be the resources or access to teachers who can teach, especially the more advanced, advanced topics. 
So this is how Saul is actually causing a revolution in education. Because it's his goal to provide every child the opportunity for a free, world-class education. And to do this, he's gone far beyond just a library of videos. His website also offers practice exercises. And students can only move to the next set of exercises when they've completed 10 in a row. Let's not overlook this point because this is what causes a student to go from the metaphorical bicycle to the unicycle exactly when they're ready. He also has built in game mechanisms so that students earn badges for their hard work. The motto at Khan Academy is you can learn anything. And they stress this by encouraging students to struggle and work through a problem and use their brain like a muscle. So I think it's a great success any time that a student is learning for the sake of understanding and the satisfaction of figuring something out. Teachers can also use the detailed dashboard which has all of the students' statistics. So they can see exactly where the students are, which videos they've watched, where they're struggling. And there are a lot of examples of classrooms around the world that have been flipped so that students watch videos to understand the concepts in at their own pace at home. And then what used to be homework is now done in the classroom interactively with the teachers. And I know that a few years ago, the idea of flipping a classroom was sort of downright wacky. But now it seems everybody's talking about it. So Saul is really interested in the long-term impact that these videos will provide. Smiling, he says, if Isaac Newton had made YouTube videos on calculus, then I wouldn't have to. <laughs> But that's assuming, of course, that Newton would have been popular on YouTube. <laughs> now, speaking of popularity, how popular is a tool like this? Well, Khan Academy is actually used by around 8 million unique students every month. And if you're not already impressed, let me tell you a little bit about the international recognition that they've received. They won the Microsoft Tech Award for Education, and they've received major donations from Google and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Saul himself was tied at number 34 in Fortune's 40 Under 40 in 2010. In 2011, he was invited to speak at the TED conference, which is incidentally the first time that I heard him talk. And in 2012, Time magazine listed Saul as one of the top most influential people on the planet. Now, what's really remarkable about Saul is that after having received so much international recognition and so many awards, he still is so down to earth. He has not moved to a comfy management position. He is still personally making videos at an astounding rate. Now, you may be impressed by his extensive output, and I know I am, but really it's not beyond any of us to also do something as constructive and useful with our time. It's actually not very difficult to share science content with the world. You're all a part of it tonight at Labora Story. I've also noticed that many scientific journals have moved to becoming free online journals. And like this, now everybody can read up on current research. Many universities are also promoting a blend of online resources together with classroom learning. Monash is doing that right now. So remember, sharing science content is not just restricted to making videos. If you're an educator, you may be familiar with answering students' questions in office hours, the same questions year after year. And by creating online content, you are answering students' questions forever. So my story tonight was about Saul. But really, it's a story about all of you. Because whenever you share science content with the world, you are the future of education. And I'd like to leave you with one final message, which is really what inspires me about Saul. He says, with so little effort on my own part, I can empower an unlimited amount of people for all time. I can't imagine a better use of my time. Thank you.